Today I'm going to show you how breaking the rules when free motion quilting can be a really good thing. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst, and you know when you're free motion quilting they're always telling you that you can't cross your lines. Don't do that, right? Well, I think you can and get some really interesting results. I don't believe there's any quilt beliefs, and if there are, I don't follow their rules. So let me show you what I mean by crossing lines and having some good results. So I'm going to start off here with a design that you might often use, and this is loops. And to make loops, you kind of do cross a line, don't you? So let's just start off with a loop and show you what I'm going to do next with it. All right, so we're going to make a loop. Like we normally do. Now let's go off and let's cross some lines in that loop and see what we get. Well, I didn't just cross the lines with that loop, did I? I cross a few more lines. But you get this kind of a bubbly, kind of frog's egg, kind of a whole bunch of loops crossing over each other together. So if you want to get a lot of texture, this is a really good way to do that. And you can use this all over your design. You could just use it in borders if you want to. Lots of different things you can do with this. You could move it along here. I mean, you can make kind of a unit and then kind of break away and make another unit. And you can have these different little units if you wanted to. Maybe you just want to have a single loop in between the different units. So that's one way you can break the rules and get a really interesting textural result. Now, what about breaking the rules when it comes to making some geometric free motion quilting designs. So for example, if I want to start with a swirl, let's say, okay, and I'm going to quilt a simple swirl. All right, so there's a simple swirl. We usually move on from there. But what about if I want to have swirls joined up together and going in different areas. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to continue on just a few more of these. Or just one more, I guess, in this case. So you can see here, we went from that kind of normal swirl, if you will, and went across and did another one, but we looped back over it and went over it and came into another one. So we're going kind of all over the place. But when you cross these lines that are joining the swirls, you get this kind of ribbon effect, which is really quite interesting. You also notice I changed the size of the swirls to keep that fun as well. And so you can do that and cross the lines either in the swirl itself or in the lines that are joining up to another swirl and get some interesting looks too. Talking about swirls, you can do something with the swirl to create that ribbon look within the swirl itself. And this is a design that I learned from Sharon Blackmore of Love Shack Quilts. And I think it makes a really elegant look. And let me show you how easy this is to do. Let's lock off my stitches again. And this time, rather than making the swirls a little more complicated looking, if you will, we're going to make just a simple curved shape to start with. So we've got that curved shape. We're starting at the bottom, as you know, it's going up and we're stopping at the sharp point. Then I'm going to come down and I'm going to do some crossing. Right, so I've crossed in two places here. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll just stitch a few more of these out so you can see what they look like. All right, so 
you can see here that we've got this curved shape that comes in, we come to a point, and then we're going to go back and across, not just once, but twice, here and here. So as soon as the line, the initial line that you stitched is at its point where it's starting to curve back in another direction, and same here, it's where this line is curving in a different direction, that's where you're crossing. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. It's still going to give this kind of ribbon look. So you can do this in all over design, or you can put it in borders and sashing. Looks really cool. So without that crossing, of the previously stitched line, you do not get a ribbon-like effect at all. So you definitely want to do some crossing there, right? Now I did mention geometric shapes before. We looked at the swirl, which is a round shape. How about a square one? How about making some squares here? I might get into some rectangles, we'll see. Let's see where my quilting takes me today. I'm never quite sure what's going to come out from my mind and my hands. So I'm doing this sort of like the swirl, but instead of curved lines I'm making, or I'm using, I should say, straight lines. Okay, so I've created my first square swirl, if you can even say that. But then I want to go off and do another one, so I'm just going to cut right across those previously stitched lines. As far over as I want to create my next one. I'll do one more. So we can see what this one looks like. So I start with the one square and then I went across not one but two again, two previously stitched lines to make the other one um, a rectangle I guess more like and that is going in a different direction. I've gone up and I've actually changed the direction that I'm making the square or rectangle swirl. And again, here I've gone through three lines. Oh, look at I'm getting very brave here, aren't I? And then I'm gone down and done, done this one as well. Something else I wanted to show you in this one that I did, um, not necessarily intentionally, but it's kind of fun to do it intentionally, is to round off the corners. I just did it kind of in the one and a couple of the sides, I guess. But you could do like, you know, the straight square uh, very rigid corners, or you could round them a little bit and then go back to the straight squares. Just something interesting you can do when you're doing this kind of a geometric shape. But without crossing those lines, it makes it, you know, you have to come back out again and go on to another one. I think the crossing of the line is actually really interesting in this design. Um, it gives it really a kind of a mid century modern look, I always think, for this particular one. So you don't always have to follow the rules, especially in free motion quilting. Sometimes breaking some of those rules can, come up, can create, I should say, some really interesting and new designs that you may not have thought of. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. I have some other videos on free motion quilting designs, so please check the description below for links to those. And please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps to get it in front of other viewers just like you. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've got just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com. Okay, I have to think about this one. I'm very confused about this for some reason or other.